Okay. Um, hi, can you can you hear me on Zoom? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. This one is better, you think? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow. High tech song, yeah. Okay. Uh, so just tell me when. No, sure. I mean, no, just, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, welcome back, everybody. Oh, I guess almost everybody. Um, so uh, let me maybe do a quick recap of what we did yesterday. So we saw this uh, definition um, so like this, this sort of basic definition of character varieties. And then I try to explain various ways of actually sort of compute it in certain way for like different uh, definition of the word computing. So I gave kind of this combinatorial definition of this combinatorial construction that uh, I mean, there's like, there was like several variation on that. And then I gave you this topological definition in terms of loops on the surface. So uh, let me just remind you that for me, V is always uh, an n-dimensional vector space of a C. G is always uh, GLV, unless I say otherwise. And S is some surface some topological surface. And so I told you about this um, Goldman algebra, which uh, as we saw is like the polynomial algebra or the free commutative algebra if you prefer on, on the set of um, homotopy classes. of free loops on S. And in fact, this is the same thing as formal C linear combination of this union of homotomy classes of loops on, on S. Okay, so we are, um, this is an algebra, this is a polynomial algebra, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, 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 no, not yet. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, of course not. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that's that's a, a polynomial algebra and you can think of it as just formal linear combination of, of, union, of free loops on, on the surface and uh, the main point is that there is a map from this algebra to the algebra function on the character variety, which uh, if you recall, it's just that if you take a free loop, you can sort of arbitrarily choose a base point somewhere and you can lift an element of that to a representation of the fundamental group based at this base point. Then you can evaluate the representation on this loop and then you take the trace and because you're taking the trace, the choice of the base point doesn't matter. Okay, and this map is subjective. And it's an algebra map. So the fact that it's an algebra map is kind of tautological. So the sort of only non trivial part is that it's actually subjective. And as I, I mentioned, this is somehow like a, a rough formulation of an old result in, in classical invariant theory. So somehow the, the question I want to address first here is what's the kernel of this map? So it's, it, it doesn't quite give a complete description of this algebra function yet. So we need to understand the kernel. And that, well, I could just tell you, but somehow this is the point where I want you to uh, remember the analogy I, I was talking about uh, at the very beginning of the lecture. 
So the idea that uh, say I have some some loop in the annulus. And really, I want to um, you know any surface, just example of course. And I really want to think of this as like the composition of some like more elementary pieces. So the way I do that is actually uh, by going 3D. Okay, and I want this map to be something like this. Uh, so that I can sort of slice uh, in, in different. I want, I want to have like some sort of like a direction so that I can slice this loop in elementary pieces. And uh, to this, I want to uh, attach some elements in. Uh, sorry, of the character variety. And this will be the function that to some equivalence class of representation. Actually, what I should say is I should like fix the base point here. I don't know if that's very clear, but uh, we'll see. And I want to lift, I want to take an element in the character variety and lift it to a representation of the fundamental group based at this base point. Um, so I should actually put that here. And the idea that to row, I want to associate a number, but really what I will do is associate a map from C to C, which is the same thing as a number. And the way I do that is that I get a map from C to V tensor visual. V tensor visual and then to C. And so the first map is just a co-evaluation. Co I, I assume you're all familiar with that. So this maps one to uh, the sum of EI tensor EI, where EI is a basis of V. Then I can just act with, uh, let's call this, oh, sorry. I guess I need color. So, so in particular, I have, I have chosen my base point here. So here I have base loop, let's call it gamma. So I can take row of gamma and I can act on EI. And then I can just take the evaluation. So I get like the, the sum of EI of row of gamma acting on EI. And you can check that this is just a trace of row of gamma. So of course, you, I think many of you are familiar with that. It's really, really just sort of the, the, the basic idea of, I don't know, like bread monoidal category or graphical calculus for symmetric monoidal category. The only novelty is that here I have like a, this surface going around. So, uh, so basically what I'm claiming is like, if I, even if I, so again, this is really a for, reformulation of this analogy. Even if I only care about the character variety like loops on the surface, it's actually better to have like pieces of loops on the surface, so to look at some sort of category. So this is a, what's a called in that case, a classical scan category. I should really say like the scan category because of course there are many versions of it. But... Okay. And um, the way it works is, well, So I have this set of already, but I have this representation category of representation of G. So this is like a very big category. So this is like possibly infinite. Direct terms. Of finite dimensional uh, G module. Okay. And basically inside of this category, uh, I want to call it F. F is for uh, fundamental. Uh, let So be the full category, subcategory. Uh, whose objects are
uh, just some products, possibly empty, of uh, the representation V and V dual. And again, I remind you that for me, V is fixed to be the n dimensional representation, like the fundamental representation. Okay. And I mean, of course, there is a choice here. I could make a different one, but somehow the idea is that uh, I'm just going to say it not right yet, but every finite dimensional representation, or every irreducible finite dimensional representation appears as a quotient or equivalently as a sub module of a tensor product of those guys. So basically, if I sort of technically I take something as a Kerubi completion, I formally like add splitting of idempotence, and then I formally add all in possibly infinite directions, and I get this whole category. So how does F generate the whole category? Like it knows everything about this category. But it's not it's not a nice category from a representation perspective, but it's a nice category from a diagrammatic perspective. So that's kind of the whole point that's here we are living in the world of representation theory. Here we are living in the sort of Kane grammatic world. And the question is, how do I describe morphisms in F in a nice diagrammatic way? Well, first of all, remember that so V and the individual are, are mutually dual, are dual to each other. So we have this, you know, evaluation and co-evaluation maps in all possible direction. And we also have this symmetric braiding from V tensor V to V tensor V. Okay. And in fact, using those things, um, let me remind you that uh, we have a canonical isomorphism like this is just an example, but in general, every time I have a dual on one side of a home, I can just switch it on the other side. And here I really mean like the home in F, or, you know, JLN, whatever. Okay. So if I use simply to like permutate thing to put the dual like on the right here or on the left here, I can just switch side in the home. And so I can basically get rid of the dual using that. Is that okay for everybody? Yeah, I mean, for the objects, I definitely want the dual. But what I claim is that if I want to describe the morphisms between two of the stanza products, they are always isomorphic to a um, space without the dual. And basically, this will be just a matter of orientation of the diagram, so I can sort of always add a, zig add a zigzag to sort of reverse the orientation. Of the okay. So in particular, using this trick, so basically if I, I, I can say what well, F, I want it to be like a rigid symmetric monoidal category. So that, that gives me all the relation that those guys will satisfy, uh, sort of formally following from that. So now I just need to describe a we, I mean, here with me. So basically, we just need to describe ohms from v to the power k to v to the power l. Okay. Another first claim is that this is zero unless uh, k is equal to l. So that sort of reduces, reduces things a bit. No, no, it's literally just a category, this full subcategory with object at tensor product of those. I, I don't take independent, but if you do take independent completion and then add directions, then you get the wall of rugby, the point. So it's something like a generating subcategory somehow. Like somehow I, I could do scan theory with like more modules than that. And somehow it might be, I mean, you can have like more objects on some simpler morphism. It's a matter of taste. I just choose this one somehow. And apparently nobody has done. Like I can't find a paper where what I'm about to say is written. So I hope this is correct, by the way, but anyway. Okay, um, so now I just have to describe what this is when you know k is equal to L. And because I have the symmetric braiding, 
uh, I have an action of the symmetric group. So I have a map from the group algebra of Sn, sorry, Sk, to uh, this space. Uh, I won't put that every time. Okay, so I have a, I have a map like this. And uh, this is a sort of well-known result, which is called a show value duality. But actually it also sounds sort of a reformulation of what I call this first fundamental theorem of classical invariant theory, that this map is subjective. So it's a sort of like non loop version of the theorem I had before. Like before I was telling you that this Goldman algebra, this map from the Goldman algebra to function on the character variety was, was subjective. And somehow this is like very similar. But, but no, I just, I don't have just loop that like arbitrary diagram. But basically what this, this thing is saying is that every morphism can be described as a composition of those guys on the other ball, like duality on symmetric braiding, basically. Okay, but we are not entirely done yet. Now we need to know what the kernel is. And the claim is that if K is uh, smaller or equal to N, then this is actually injective as well. So this is an isomorphism. And then there is actually like basically one more phenomena that explain why there will be a kernel in, in, in higher dimension is that uh, observe that if you take the n plus ones, x to the power of p, this is zero. Okay, and, and this is, yeah. This is because v is n dimensional, but really to be a little bit pedantic, it's because it's a n-dimensional vector space. Like if you were working in an arbitrary symmetric monoidal category, rigid symmetric monoidal category, you could talk about dimension of objects. And so it might happen that you have an n-dimensional object, but you won't satisfy this in general. So this is really something that characterizes like the characterize or is the n-dimensional vector space. And uh, the consequence of that, I claim that somehow this is the only extra relation that you need. So I claim that the kernel of this map, if k is uh, at least n plus one, is simply the, the two-sided ideal generated by uh, the alternated sum. So I look at the symmetric group on N better as a subgroup of S, K, sorry, SN plus one, as a subgroup of SK, which I can because K is at least N plus one. Here is the group algebra of the symmetric group. It's C of SK. The, the, uh, the, the map is the, the it's that you can just like permutate factor. And this is this is a classical result that this is actually that commute with the action of GL of V. So it's morphism GL of, of V module. But actually, like all of them are linear combination of those. This is this is what's known as show value duality. So basically, I can take this alternate sum where epsilon sigma is a signature of sigma. And I claim that the in general the kernel of this map is, is a two-sided ideal generated by this element. Okay, so now I can, this is sort of algebraic part, but of course what we, sorry, yeah, that's not very clear. So it's, uh, let, let me write bigger. It's surface of uh, all permutation in SN plus one, which I see as a subgroup of SK, which I can because K is greater than N plus one, yeah. Can you put the camera back so we can see that? Yeah, no, sorry, I, I was just uh, writing something bigger, not something new. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm moving to this. No, I think the truth is this one, yeah. 
Okay. So uh, basically, I want to just say the same thing again, but with diagram. So I claim that F is equivalent to the category with objects uh, finite sequences of plus and minus, where basically this is V and this is visual. Okay. And morphisms. Oh, sorry, there is, of course, there is one relation that I forgot to tell you about. So let me just get back here. Yeah. So this was a complicated relation, but there is a very simple relation, which is that V has dimension N. So I have to add this N, or maybe I should say N times the identity of C to be precise. So this is a map from C. And uh, so this is a trace of the identity. No. No, that's that's uh, that that's one more relation. Yeah. Please repeat questions. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure there was like like a sort of precise question, but sorry, like, I I hope this will be clear here. So morphisms are uh, like almost a P classes. Uh, I think I already no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, homotopy uh, classes of well, it's a bit overkill to say tangles here, but you know uh, that's like tangles up to homotopy instead of isotopy because I don't have the difference between overcrossing and undercrossing. So it's just like I should say maybe planar tangle or like plan planar diagrams or whatever. Uh, which are uh, oriented, I should say. And modulo, those relations, so the fact that this is N, and then something that I want to write like this. And I have a relation like this. What do I mean by that? Well, it's simply I don't know, something like if I have then by definition this will be a okay. Okay, so every permutation gives me a diagram like this. And uh, the time that the uh, this category is equivalent to the object being the category being this object and then those two relation. Okay. So this is this relation, this is typically something that people people call a uh, scan relation. So I don't think there is like a formal definition of what S kind relation is, but basically the intuition is that it should be something which is local on diagrams. So usually, a, originally at least, a scan relation is like a linear relation between nodes or you know loops in some space, which are identical everywhere except in some like small parts, basically. So that's what I mean by local. But somehow I think that the sort of correct way of understanding that is that really a scan relation should be a relation in a category. And the fact that it's local, it's really the fact that literally you no, know, it's an equality of like morphisms between objects. And then of course you can have something around it, but it doesn't matter in that case. So like ori again, originally like in, in people usually still you have something like that, but you have to imagine that those things are like closing somewhere. But I'm saying that if you work with this category of query from categorical framework, you just don't have to do that. You can just it's just an equality of morphisms, basically. Okay. 
And so this is what I call, want to call like a scan presentation of F. And because F generates everything, this is kind of a scan presentation of, of Rub G, actually. Um, OK, so maybe this is not the most familiar version of the scan relation, but let me uh, uh, make an exception, exception to my rule and let's talk a little bit about SLN. So for uh, remark, maybe, not that if I take the nth exterior power of V, this is one dimensional. Okay. This is one dimensional, and in fact, it's it's a determinant representation. So this is just the, the GLV representation where GLV act by multiplication by its determinants. But of course, no, if you look at SLN, well, the determinant is one. So in particular, wedge N of V is isomorphic to the trivial representation as SLN module, but not as GLN modules. Somehow that's, I claim that the, the world difference between GLN and SLN is there. So in particular, it means that somehow I have, I have like, one more map in my category that I didn't have before. Well, like maybe two maps actually. So I have a map from v, Vn to C, to the trivial representation that is just like the alternate sum. So that, that sounds like a kind of the one Vn to the uh, sum of sigma of V of sigma one, uh, V of sigma n, and I can represent this map as something like that. Okay, so I have n copies of V, and I have a map to the empty thing, which is which is C, and I also have a map the other way around. We just send ones to some sort of like canonical element in. In V to Z. And also, yeah, well, yeah, uh, not really. It's, it's a tensor product. It's a tensor product and it, it, it belongs to uh, So the thing is that in my category, I only have access to power of V. Yeah. In practice, so this is an element of this guy, which is actually isomorphic to C. I'm not sure what, you, uh, I mean, those are not coordinates, they are like vectors. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you need, I mean, you need to choose an identification here. So maybe that's, not quite canonical. But I mean, there's like, yeah, there is a one dimensional space of choice, basically. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's not canonical, but I don't think the result will depend on it. I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, choosing a basis in a one dimensional vector space. That, that's not definitely not canonical, but anyway. Let's see. Okay, so uh, the question is why is uh, home space zero when k is not L? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure I remember if there is a simple argument. Just three? Yeah. yeah. 
Ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, uh, I mean it's 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 sort of like easy to check when you like if you if you use your diagrams that will try to decompose those as direct of, of presentations, and they will press into diagrams like the number of proxies. So there is no way. Uh, is that is that me? Sorry, is that there? Yeah, sorry. So I mean, it's, it's easy to see if you know a bit of representation theory. You can decompose this tensor product as direct sum of certain module index by Jung diagrams, and the Jung diagram will will have like different number of boxes. So there is no way there is a map from one side to the other. But there is probably a simpler way to see that. So we try. Yeah, I, I like that. that. That's a very nice argument. Yeah. Say again. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, I don't remember your name. What was suggesting that you can act by like twice the identity, which obviously is an element of GLN on that. And here you will get like two to the power of K, and here two to the power of L, so it doesn't act the same way. So it can't be isomorphic as, as modular. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then I'm okay. Well, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, Yeah, I'm just not sure. Yeah, I thought this is what I was saying, but sorry. Uh, yeah, we agree, I think. Anyway, um, okay. so where were we? So yeah, we have this, so the, we have this extra map. For, I mean, we are working with categories, so I don't want to say that it's larger or smaller because it's probably a bit of both, but it's something funny happens for SL2. Let's be even more specific. So in that case, what you actually have is a map from V tensor V to C. And I claim that this is uh, non-degenerate. So in fact, for SL2, V is self-dual. So it's not canonically self-dual, but it's isomorphic with dual as an SL2 module, not as a GL2 module again. And somehow the reason for that is that for SL2, another way of saying that is that the trace of A is equal to the trace of A minus one that, that's somehow like a special relation for two and so if e1 e2 is a basis of v sorry i will i will write well for for sln i claim that there is an extra map from v to the end of c Yeah, sorry. I'm sure the special. Yeah, sorry. And also, so the, what's going on? Oh, this wasn't sprinkled. Is that okay? Is that my beer? Okay. So yeah, what 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 I'm writing here is. Yeah, yes, so this is further specialization. There was GLN and SLN, and this is SL2. And, and somehow, like something very special happens for SL2. And, and this is due to either that or that, because they are pretty much the same thing. And now I should say that when you start working with this exterior uh, product, there is a question of sign which becomes very annoying. But I'm happy about it because then I can tell you about uh, a paper that I really like that is on my. Uh, to my list, 
a Peter Tingley, which is called a minus sign that used to annoy me, but now I know why it's there. And it's, it's a very, very, very nice paper, like very well written. And of course, everything is done very, very precisely. And so not only explain why the sign is shorter, but you know, it's, you have like very explicit formula. So it's already, it's really useful to have. And so I will do a slightly non-standard choice. I hope I won't get this wrong. So I want this uh, everything to map E1, E2 to minus one. And so it maps E2, E1 to one because it's anti-symmetric. And then I also have a co-evaluation which maps one to E1 wedge E2. So that is a weird, like a funny sign uh, shift here. On this, so I want to represent this map by a cap like this and this map by a cup with no orientation. So again, I'm just saying the same thing three times. Like I can get rid of like V self dual, I can get rid of orientation because the trace of A and the trace of A just are the same. So it doesn't matter in which direction I follow the loop basically. So I can draw loops of my, on my surface, which are not or oriented, but because of this sign issue, you have to be careful that it's not really like homotopy classes of loop because you have this relation. So technically I'm looking at like framed loop of, on my surface. It seems that you are in a lot of pain. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, sorry, it's, yeah, 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 I should. Yeah. But because it has additional morphism, it has less objects because what I'm adding is an isomorphism from V to V dual, at least in the SL2 case. But. Yeah, exactly. What what I'm so what I'm saying that in the in the SLN case we would get so I probably have to switch. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, have a pairing on V. So, but in the SLN, SLN case, what I add is something like that. Is this arrows? And basically what I'm saying is that if I, if you like another way of saying that, so again, don't worry about the sign, but this thing is something like that. Yeah, but because in, in, in that case, you know, you only have like two strands and some of the orientation are opposite. You can just forget. Yeah, but then I, I'm, this, this doesn't play any role here. No, I mean, they are the same. They are related by an isomorphism between V and V dual. So all of these are just reformulation of the same thing. You can say V and V dual are isomorphic. So I can take this cup and like pull it back to V. Or I can just define a non-degenerate pairing on V, which will give me isomorphism to V and V dual, and which will match the cup, the cap. So you can, you can do it either way. But I'd rather just forget completely about V dual and say, okay, now I have a pairing on V. So I don't need visual anymore. I just have like, I have my two categories of objects that are products of V and no visual at all. And most of them are like unoriented uh, backgrounds with this caveat that you have to be careful about that. So if you want to be fancy, and this is what, what Peter explained in his paper, is basically you have a symmetric monoidal category, but you choose like the other pivotal structure. On, on, on the symmetric monoidal category. Anyway, the long story short is that, let me just check the sign. Uh, yeah. 
here we go. Now you can check that the, oh, sorry. Yeah. So I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but you get, so the relation that you get is that the loop is two, uh, well, plus or minus two. I, um, I thought it was minus two, I've written two on my notes, so I'm not sure. But the most important relation is this one. Can prove that. And, and maybe you've seen that before, this is something called the classical, as opposed to quantum, uh, Kelsman scan relation. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's not more like, like to think my own of, but I don't know a reference where this is like explained this way. I'm matter of test, but I sort of like uh, how it really comes from more presentation theory. And by the way, I should actually say for the, uh, for this general SLN case, uh, there is a reference also on the lead uh, on the list of my webpage by uh, Sikra, which, which uh, explains this. At least it, it gives a description with all the relation. It doesn't really it doesn't really explain that it comes from that, but but it's it's kind of fairly clear to read between the lines. Okay. Okay. So why am I doing all of that? Actually. Like, like where, where are the character varieties in there? So all of this was about just representation of B. And uh, well, no, I can do a sort of straightforward definition. So let's... Uh, SK of S, say, where S is a surface, a category with objects uh, like, like um, finite sequences of points on S, uh, which are labeled by plus or minus. Yeah, I realized maybe it's something I haven't made clear is that really the orientation is about duality. I was sort of implying that, but you know, when a, when an arrow goes down, it, it goes down from plus to plus or it goes up from minus to minus. I don't know if that helps there. Yeah. Like, like, like when you have map between dual, the orientation is the other way. Like I'm, I'm writing morphism from top to bottom Apparently that's because I'm French. I mean, I, I don't know why. I find it very natural, but apparently everybody disagrees with that. So, so I have like orientation at the bottom, but whenever I have maps between dual, the arrow is goes up. Uh, this is just a minute of like this is related to this evaluation of evaluation, of course. Anyway, so my category are like finite sequence of points on the surface labeled by that on morphisms. Well, they are just the same. So basically just uh, like homotopy classes of, uh, I don't know, like flat, tangle, oriented in S cross I modulo, modulo the scan relations. So the one, the one I gave before, okay. Well, I mean, in, in particular, this, this, this has a map from like the, 
I, I don't know if that answers your question, but so the, Natalie is asking whether how it relates to the configuration space. Um, like there is a map from the bread group of X to, uh, let's say, on the morphism in this category of plus to the power n. Oh, I should say. Um, well, I mean, in, in that case, it's actually like, I don't know, like the symmetric group. And I mean, I don't know if that's a standard notation of the symmetric group of the surface, but for now, we are like working up to a monotopy, not the isotopy. But of course, there is a quantum version of that where it gets a map from the bread group. And uh, on yes, it is subjective in that case. Like there is a, it's like quantum trivial duality, basically, that the map from the bread group to home space is of rub QGLN is subjective. Anyway, um, so I can define this category. Again, the, the whole point of working with this category is that somehow like this kind of relation, they are just easier to write down in that, in that context. If you want to prove them with loops directly, it's, it's complicated because loops are global objects and you want to apply local relation. But here you can just work with morphisms. Um, say again? Uh, I don't know the difference. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they can cross, yeah, sorry. Oh, if you mean like with the, like the, the embedding of like the wall, all the stone at once, the, the, the emails, they can intersect. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, I don't know. It's it just weird to call these tangles when, when, when they're like, no. Yeah, he's, he's asking why I want to call them flats. He just to insist that for no, I'm not distinguishes between undercrossing and overcrossing, that I'm walking up to a motopy. It, it does that I'm sort of trying to set up things for the quantum case, but since some of you might be like more familiar with a, like quantum scan relation already, I want to avoid the confusion somehow. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm doing a good job at it, but that's that, that what the plan said. And uh, so basically the main observation is that the algebra function of the character variety is pretty much by definition, the endomorphism of the empty object in that category. So this is just in this category of like tangles so or in particular, I can look at closed thing, which are morphism from empty to empty. And those are exactly loops on the surface modulo the scan relation. So in particular, it tells me that the scan relation that I just erased is the kernel of the map from the Goldman algebra to the algebra function of the character variety. So this in particular gives a, describes the kernel of, of that map. But actually, it gives you much more. Like it gives you a, a, a nice category that you can, you know, do stuff with. Uh, anyway, um, and basically, with with you know uh, talking about the scan category, ultimately my goal was to talk a little bit about the character stack. So I guess I will end with that. Um, let's see. So again, as um, so as I was saying the other day, I don't I don't know what the stack is, and I don't know what quorum sheet on the stack is. So I, I will give you like a very down to earth definition, but you should know that there is like a more abstract and invariant definition. But basically, the idea is that if we start with a representation variety, instead of taking the quotient by literally like identifying things that are related by the action of G, we want to like just not do that and, and remember the action of G. And like work equivalently. 
Okay, so basically we, we remember that the, so the algebra function on the representation variety is uh, an action G on G, but instead of taking G invariant, I want to take, uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, sorry, no way, uh, okay. So instead of taking this, I want to replace it by G equivalent uh, of L S model. So instead of taking the algebra of functions and then taking invariant, I want to take modules over this algebra with like a compatible action of G, which is the same as uh, So as I explained at the beginning, this you can think of this as an algebra in the symmetric moveda category rub B. So in particular, it makes sense to take its category of modules in there. Okay. So really this is the idea that instead of modding out by G or like working G invariantly, I want to work G equivalent. Somehow. And for me, this is a definition of the category of quasi ground sheaves on the character right. Okay. So of course this is not a good definition, but because that way it seems that you know it kind of depends on the base point or whatever. There is a better definition, but I don't want to get into it. Uh, I mean, if you well, no, I don't. Maybe maybe later I will, but not not yet. Again, uh, yeah, ORS mode in RubG. So, this is just uh, the things that are in there, it's just object in RubG, which are modules over this algebra, and such that uh, the action map, uh, let's say G cross, oh no, sorry. So this is a module of this algebra, so there is an action map, and I want that to be a, a, mod, a morphism of G module. So this is basically the idea, and I, I sort of want to emphasize that this is really the same idea as what we just did. Like we had an algebra and I sort of claim that if you replace it by some sort of category, which looks more complicated, things actually becomes easier because you can chop things into pieces. The thing that this can theory thing, it's very nice. It's very topological. It's very elementary in a way, but it doesn't really give the sort of a nice category. Like it's not Abelian, it's not an important complex. It's not, if you're doing a representation, get Series that's not the sort of category you want, and and basically the claim is that this seemingly complicated category of quasi coherent sheaves on the character stack, whatever that means, it's sort of like the good, the correct replacement for this kind category if you if you want some some like nice category, and uh, um, something I should have said before about the already about this kind category, but. Uh, so basically the first the first main observation is that well of course the character variety of the disk is trivial which somehow is annoying because you might want to construct surfaces by giving disks together but the character variety of the disk is trivial, so you can't use that to construct varieties. But of course, the scan category of the disk is not trivial, and it's just our category F. Okay. Because in that case, there is no surface, so I just have a bunch of points on the disk, which is just the same as having a bunch of points. So by definition, I have, I have this. And in exactly the same way, I claim that the category of quasi-coherent sheaves on the character 
variety of the disk is in fact all of rub G. Okay. So basically here I'm saying two things which are, I, I think are kind of like the world, like the most important message of this lecture. So let's, you know, uh, be uh, slow about that. So the first one is what I just said, that the character variety of the disk is trivial, but the character stack of the disk is interesting and you can do stuff with it, which is nice. And the second one is what I was also saying before, that the somehow the scan category gives you this, this thing, which is diagrammatic kind of weird, but the category of heaves gives you rep G, which is the thing that you know everybody really wants. At least I, I want. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, like I, I, I hope this, this one is clear that the scan category of the disk is F. And I claim that this is, this is basically similar. Are you, I, I was actually about to give a bit of details on that. So the, the idea is that the, so what the representation variety of this? This is just a point. So what's the character variety of the disk? It's a quotient of a point by G. If you're taking the quotient in the, like a fine sense, you're taking G invariant in K, so it just. But if you're taking the stack equation, you want quasi coherent sheaves on that, which we call BG, that's called the classifying stack of G. And so what's, what's a quasi coherent sheaves on that? That's a quasi coherent sheave on the point, which is G equivalent. What's a quasi coherent sheave on the point at the vector space? What's the G equivalent vector space? That's a representation of G. Basically, so you should think, you know, as some sort of like vector bundle on the points, but you have some compatible action of G. So at the end, you just get a G module, basically. Okay. So so again, this this thing is just quasi current is on the classifying stack of G, which is a very complicated way of saying rub G, but that's that's kind of the point somehow. And. Uh, and basically, the world idea, and I think then I will uh, stop there, is that the uh, so basically this is the main slogan, the main slogan of the lectures, is that this category of quasi sheaves on S is built by gluing together. Copies of Rub G. So basically, that the idea. you can glue surfaces together, but you can construct any surface by gluing together disks. And then the character variety, the character stack will be obtained by gluing together character stacks of disks. And you really need those, this for this to be non trivial somehow. And, and you might own well, maybe, you know, if you have something like not disk, but maybe an annulus or some elementary piece. Uh, maybe we don't need that. You still do need that because the function on character varieties, they don't glue together correctly. So you really need this category of sheaves for, for things to be well defined. So somehow this is the main slogan. And I should say that there is something analog here, analogous, I should say. And uh, in particular, I, I told you that rub G is actually some sort of like completion of F where you add inimpotence on direction and whatnot. And I claim that the scan category of S is actually somehow like a category of free ORS module. So it's a category of modules in rub G of the form. Like it's, it's exactly what you would expect. It's Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, where, where, but I, I mean, like, maybe plus or minus, like, maybe many do. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to, I mean, it's, yeah, it's modules for modules in RebG for this algebra of the form. Basically, there are like three modules generated by object of F. 
object of f. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. So I mean, this is this is sort of really the natural thing. Like for for the disk, you get red G, and here you get f. And then this category of sheets is defined to be module for O R S. And the scan category does module for O R S, so that will build out of objects in that category. So again, you, you have the same situation where this the scan category is very uh, nice and elementary, and it also satisfies properties that exist. Like you can you can glue, uh, this is also in my list by Juliet Cook. You can glue scan categories together in a nice way. But you get this sort of like weird category of free module. And then you have to, in that case, it's not just a matter of having the input of direction, you actually need to have like all limits or something like that to get a nice representation of the category. But really, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to work with this. But if you're more comfortable with this, that's okay, and you should think about it. So that, that, that works as well. Uh, anyway. And so let me just end by saying that. So again, the whole idea is that this category is all the scan category, if you prefer, can be constructed by gluing together copies of rub G. Because here we are in a geometric context with actual category of sheaves. Uh, there is a precise sense in which this is true, but I don't want to tell you that because the whole point of the lecture will be like factorization homology also gives a precise sense to that, which also work for category which are not category of sheaves. So somehow the, the idea is that factorization homology is something like a non-commutative version of the fact that category of sheaves sort of glue nicely together, uh, basically. Like you could take some sort of like affine cover on this and then this category is like a co of the category of modules for those affine thing or whatever. You don't want to see that. Uh, factorization homology will be something harder than that, but at least we'll have to see one of them, not, not both basically. But anyway, so look, the whole point is that factorization homology allows you to make this precise and then to replace rub G by rub QG, which is what I really want to do. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this one. Uh, thank you very much. I hope I'm not. How am I on time? Oh, yeah, sorry. So are there any questions or comments? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Natalie is asking why, why this is true. Well, because we, um, that's the, I mean, the, the idea is that this, this and on space is precisely made of loops on the surface, oriented loop, like free loops on the surface. Is that, is that okay? Like, like in this category, a map from empty to empty is just a closed diagram. Yeah, on the surface. So I, I guess um, you, you might wonder, you know, this is clear that there is a map from here to here by evaluation and it's clear that it's sort of, it has to be compatible, like the skin relation is true. The question is like why, you might wonder, maybe there are like more relations. And um, the answer is, that's where you can use a combinatorial version to say, well, actually all relations are more like come from representation theory of GNS. And uh, I guess, yeah, if you really want to, to formally prove that you have to go back to the sort of, you have to choose like generator of the format or group on this. Uh, uh, not do crazy computation, but just show that, that all the relation that we could possibly have, they, they have to be true in like for, for representation of GLN somehow. Yes? Not, not really, uh, is it still written? Should I switch? No, okay. Um, so is, is for Zoom people, is asking about this, this uh, ohm from V to the K to V to the L is zero.
Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he's asking whether it involves sure lemma. Yeah, yeah, it does. As I say, one way to see it is to decompose this as irreducible. Um, I mean, it's not, that's not really sure lemma. It just saying that there is no morphism from two irreducible representations that are not isomorphic. Uh, yes. We say, say again. No, so uh, he's asking whether the fact that function Anglu has to do with the fact that it's two dimensional. No, no, it has to do with the fact that there are global functions. And they are like glue is something local. And, um, global function from the global way. If you because it functions with respect to inclusion, you have a map from the like, product of uh, if you do two you have a map from product of character rights to character rights of the thing. But it won't be as often in general. And it's kind of it's kind of easy to see. Uh, maybe I should say that, like, it, if if you think about the scan perspective, it's actually pretty clear. What I'm saying is that it's not true that every loop on a, if you glue two surfaces, maybe I should draw a picture. If you glue two surfaces together, it's not true in general that. Okay, which board do we have? It's not true in general that every loop comes from one of the half somehow. Like I don't know if I have if I have a surface here and another one here, and I've glued them together here, then I don't know like this loop. This loop do not come from a loop on one side or on, uh, one or the other. But if you're working with like the whole scan thing, you can say, well, this one is actually the gluing of like, you know, this scan on this scan. No, this makes sense because that, that thing is actually a morphism in my scan category on that one too. And that makes sense to glue them together and get the loop. Very cool. So, yeah, that, 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 thanks for uh, making me make that point. So that, that's really the reason why the scan category glue correctly, but the uh, scan algebra doesn't somehow because, because if you want, uh, the only way to get those loops somehow is to, is to glue things that aren't loops. Basically. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, ha. So he's asking why why are we focusing on surfaces? Um, you mean do you mean as opposed to arbitrary manifold or like three manifold? Or? I mean the the main. Uh, I guess, well, I think there are like many answers to that. The, the sort of, which is maybe like just shifting the question elsewhere is because they have this Poisson structure that I'm going to talk about in half an hour. And, uh, and you say, well, why, why do we care about this Poisson structure? And there are many reasons for that. And, and at the end of the day, the, the thing that when you quantize this Poisson structure, there are a lot of like well-known quantum algebras that shows up. And uh, uh, I don't know, somehow it gives you a way to do like geometric representation theories for theory for this algebra. And I should say that the other reason is that, uh, of course, you know, like topological invariants of, of surfaces, they are not interesting, but, but people care about three manifolds, for example. And, and it turns out that, um, for closed surfaces, this Poisson structure is actually symplectic. And um, three manifolds with boundary, they give you Lagrangian subvarieties in this character varieties. And, and, and this Lagrangian structure is actually a, a, like a three manifold invariant, which is related to Jan Simon theory and Rustic and Troyer theory. And so behind all of that, there is like all of that extensively dimension three, and, and the, the, you know, people care about three manifolds somehow. Uh, No question. Okay. Then, uh, let's go get some coffee. <laughs> yeah.